Good morning. I hereby call this meeting to order. Uh, good morning to everybody out there today, and thanks for joining us on a beautiful spring day for our spring central chapter meeting. Well, I know we're getting closer and closer to a time where we can host these meetings in person. We still obviously hope to meet virtually so we can share important information and updates with everybody. So similar to the fall meeting uh, in this virtual environment, a few elements of the meeting will be accomplished differently than we had while meeting in person. Uh, so we kindly ask for your understanding if we have any technical difficulties, um, but we look forward to moving the meeting along today. And again, thanks for your time. Uh, just a couple quick housekeeping items uh, that will assist us in conducting the meeting this morning. Uh, as John has mentioned, when people came in and if you just joined us, uh, attendance will be recorded for today's meeting by individuals entering their full name and their PGID in the chat room. If you have not already, please enter this information now. Uh, in order to receive your MSR credits uh, for today's meeting, you must enter this information within the next 15 minutes. And while we will conduct a roll call of the chapter board of directors later in the meeting, uh, only the officers will be able to uh, reply verbally and the rest will be recorded via this registration check-in process. On the screen, you'll see your officers and the others that will be presenting during, during today's meeting. While we will be able to hear them, we won't be able to hear you. So if you have any questions or comments throughout the day, uh, be sure to enter those into the chat feature. Uh, we'll be sure to include those in our open forum items later in the meeting. So in order to make this call more like a meeting, which we'd like, and much less more like a streaming TV show, uh, we will encourage everybody to use the chat feature to answer any questions today. This will help us uh, create the meeting a bit more uh, interactive as we, had, as we had mentioned. So please ask questions and make comments in addition to typing in your name and ID number for registration so we can make sure everybody is logged as we mentioned. Executive Director John Gould will be serving as our moderator as he's done for many of our virtual uh, meetings and seminars for the past year. Uh, he's become very good at that. So John will be able to uh, moderate the day for us and he'll be sure to read out your questions or comments. If we miss your question or your comment at all during the meeting uh, today, during the live session, we'll be able, we'll be sure to follow up with you uh, directly post meeting. We have uh, appointed our Sergeant at Arms today and I really appreciate Alan Smith, uh, PGA from the first tee of Prince William County who will serve as our, our Sergeant at Arms today. So Mr. Smith uh, will ensure that everyone is in attendance and remains in order in accordance with our section policy. I ask you to ensure the staff closes the meeting registration 15 minutes after I've called this meeting to order. Kevin Dean, PGA professional here from Washington Golf and Country Club will serve as our parliamentarian. So on behalf of the parliamentarian, uh, please note that anyone having new business that they wish to discuss must submit their requests in writing in the chat to the secretary by 9.30 a.m or before the new business segment is reached on the agenda, whichever comes first. For our roll call today, um, our Vice President and, and Acting Secretary, John Oberly, our Head Golf Professional at Mount Vernon Country Club, will now call the role of the Board of Directors. Uh, <clears throat> President Jay Dufty. Here. Vice President and Secretary John Oberly. Here. Honorary President Phil Bowers. Here. Director at Large, Eli Morales. A8 Director, Ryan Fellows. Eastern Director, Roger Welch. Central Director, Chris Constantino. Western Director, Michael Zosh. Tournament Chair, Bryce Bussey. PJ professionals dedicate their lives to serving their members and customers and to the promotion of this great game of golf. While newly elected members join our ranks, we also lose many colleagues each year. We now ask for a moment of silence and meditation for those beloved Mid-Atlantic PGA professionals who have died since our last chapter meeting. Hank Majeski, PGA, past section president and Hall of Famer, formerly of Wakefield Valley Golf in the Central Chapter. Eric Suvak, PGA, formerly of Hudson Golf in the Southern Chapter. Daniel Horn, PGA, formerly of Stonewall Golf Golf Club and Everybody Golf School in Oakmar in the Central Chapter. 
and Troy Beck, PGA, MA PGA Class of 2021 Hall of Fame member, formerly of Glendale Golf Club in the Central Chapter. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Uh, I would like to offer obviously a huge thank you to our supporting sponsors for today's meeting. Today we have Mary Leahy from Callaway Golf, Mark Barron PGA and Craig Hammett PGA from Signature Golf, Jeremy Griner PGA from Jeremy Griner Golf Services. We'll be hearing from our sponsors via video. Uh, first, let's hear from Callaway Golf. Mary is joined by her fellow Callaway uh, rep, Andrew Milnarski. If you have any questions for Mary, uh, please enter them into the chat. Executive, Executive Director Gould will read them following the video uh, provided by Callaway Golf and Mary and, and, uh, and Andrew. Well, good morning and uh, welcome to the uh, Callaway part of the presentation this morning. I'm Mary Leahy. I'm Andrew Milnarski. How are we guys? Good morning. Good morning. So we wanted to just talk to you this morning about a few things uh, in regards to Callaway and what we've got going on. Uh, there's a lot going on here. So um, let's let's get you started and um, welcome you to this meeting. So certainly uh, some adversity that we've been dealing with all this year. So first off, thanks for um, putting up with all that you guys have gone through. I know it's been a lot of uh, a lot of unexpected challenges. So first off, thanks so much for all you guys have been through and supporting me and Mary throughout the uh, throughout the adverse year. <laughs> and we're going to do our best to support you as much as we can as we continue forward. Um, so uh, Andrew and I just want to touch base on a few things this morning. Um, We've got some Callaway updates for you, uh, kind of what's going on on tour, what's going on with some new products, uh, including some availability uh, and some of the great things and some of the challenges there. Uh, we also want to talk to you a little bit about fitting days and uh, certainly talk a little bit about your tournament business uh, with Callaway now that we're really going to have tournaments in 2021. Yeah, so one one exciting thing that I would definitely touch on in that first part is our new um, acquisition of Topgolf. So we actually did purchase um, Topgolf um, uh, just recently. So now we uh, we were kind of a partner with them where they um, used our equipment, but now that we uh, we actually did acquire them, um, just like we've acquired um, you know OGO, Jack Wolfskin, and and recently Travis Matthew as well. Um, but some yeah, very exciting things on tour. Um, we recently signed John Rom. Uh, who's been playing very uh, very solidly out there. Um, I think one thing you'll see that will help drive sell through for particularly putters is our Red Stroke Lab um, putters this year. There's a lot of players on tour that are using them um, and it's very distinct towards our product. So it's gonna be something that hopefully somebody will see a tour player like that using a red shaft on a Sunday, come in and have questions for you. So that's one of our marketing efforts to help drive some sell through there in the shop for you guys. They do look pretty awesome. So uh, the rest of the new products are really uh, bringing Callaway up to the leadership position, not only on tour, but in your golf shops as well. Um, certainly the new Epic lineup with the um, Epic Speed, Epic Max, and the Epic Max LS drivers. Um, and then the Fairway Wood line are just absolutely phenomenal. Um, the Apex line is killing it uh, out of the gate that Sleeper of the year is the Apex DCB, which mm -hmm. really fits a lot of your members. Um, the putter line is fantastic. Uh, I think, you know, you'll see Maverick staying in the line, Bertha staying in the line. Um, and certainly speaking of, um, you know, products that are super game improvement, uh, the new Reva uh, full package set line is pretty good, isn't it, Andrew? I could not agree more. So yeah, D DCB has been an absolute sleeper um, throughout the, um, I, I don't think we expected to be nearly as popular as like the standard Apex, but it's doing really, really well. And you're right, the Reva set, as we saw a new influx of players last year, the Reva set's been in incredibly popular. So that's going to be something where if you expect and forecast to have some um, new players in the game that are looking to um, upgrade in, you know, say June, July, August, it's going to be something that you're going to want to get a couple more stock sets for now. I know I booked a decent amount in, but it's been incredibly popular and I would expect them to be 
definitely a little back order going forward. So it's going to be something that if you do want to get those sets, you're going to want to get them in now. Um, same with golf ball and range balls. If you're looking to get range balls, um, even, you know, if, if we put it in now, it's probably going to show up in September. So it's going to be something that we definitely want to get them in the system now. Um, I can't stress enough golf balls. If you want orders, um, you're, you're going to need to get them in now. I know we've gotten quite a bit of pre-books. Um, it's going to be something that throughout the season, we're going to really struggle to get golf ball out the door. So definitely feel comfortable knowing that if you have a lot now, which I feel like a lot of guys feel like they do have quite a bit, um, be comfortable with that because they will be hard to get throughout the season. Yeah. And, um, you know, we do uh, our manufacturing of our premium golf balls, the Chrome Soft, Chrome Soft X and the XLS that's coming out. Um, we do that up in Chicopee, Massachusetts. We're the second largest employer in Western Massachusetts. But uh, some of our other golf balls we do overseas, just like our other uh, competition. Keep in mind that they are having some challenges getting product uh, to these factories to build it. And then once they build it, uh, they're having issues getting containers overseas. So we can fly in things like um, driver heads and fairway wood heads and apex iron heads or maverick iron heads, but we can't fly in uh, golf balls because of the, uh, the cost. We can't fly in golf bags. So those are things you're going to see from us that are going to have some challenges. I cannot stress enough. If you do not have golf balls ordered for September, you will not get them. We can't, the days of just ordering today and having golf balls there next week are, are really challenged right now. Um, so, you know, on top of that, uh, like Andrew said, range balls aren't coming in until July and August. If you don't have them on order, we will not be able to ship you until July or August. And that is consistent even if you're not carrying Callaway golf balls. So protect yourself for range balls, uh, no matter which vendor. And of course, we'd like it to be ours. Um, but we want to make sure you guys know you got to plan out a little bit better. Um, but not and, on every product, right? And I say with yeah, with that adversity in mind, I will say I'm hearing a lot of feedback from pros that Callaway is number one in getting custom fit golf clubs out the door. I know there's a lot of other manufacturers that are struggling quite a bit. Um, and our, you know, credit to our, our build team are doing very, very well. I'm seeing still a ton of products that are in that seven to 10 day category. We don't have a ton of custom clubs that are back ordered. Um, so sell with confidence knowing that when you custom fit somebody at one of your fitting day events, it's going to get out the door. We may change the uh, grip, uh, you know, or we may ask you to change out the shaft because the other manufacturers that manufacture ship, uh, shafts and grips are having challenges. So keep that in mind as well. We we may not be perfect, but we want to get it out. Our original goal is 24 to 48 hour turnaround time on custom clubs. And we've we've done a very nice job of living up to that in most cases, which is pretty awesome. Agreed. So speaking of fitting golf clubs, <laughs> the days of demo days are over. Uh, ineffective demo days uh, are done. Uh, with us, and we are looking uh, for effective fitting events only. Right. So there's been this has been one of those changes this year that things have that that coronavirus has shown us that there's different ways to do things, and fitting days have done extremely extremely well for us. Um, and I know Mary, you've had a ton of success. I recently just did one at Talbot Country Club, where I had Mark Kimenow, the head pro, with me side by side. We did six fittings. And we did six thousand dollars in wholesale and it took four hours so we were able to like really focus on those particular players and have a really successful day and i know you've had some success like that as well yeah and and the thing that uh I, we did an, a, an event the other day inside the ballroom inside they uh the golf professional had two nets set up um we had two track man my team was there the golf professional staff was there. That is a must do. If you're only going to get one fitting day with a vendor, make it worthwhile. Make it work worthwhile with Callaway. These are sales days. These guys did $10,600 in sales that day inside on a rainy Saturday because the golf professional staff was present. They were closing the sale. They were t confirming with the member that this is the right club to buy. They were present the entire time. And that makes an effective fitting event. 
Mm -hmm. Think of these as sales days, revenue generating days. We're not there just to be friends and let people tire kick. We're there to sell golf clubs. So that is a team effort, my team and your team working together to close the sale. We yeah. also offer the trade-in bump uh, just for the fitting events only, right, Andrew? Yeah, so I've seen a ton of success where a guy will be on the, the verge of getting new product and then you can kind of just tell him that, hey, we're offering a little bonus right now to trade in your golf clubs um, and we can use some of this credit on your old clubs for a uh, purchase of a new club. And that's something, especially if it's coming from a staffer or someone that they trust from the um, from the club there, it's something that really solidifies that sale. So that's something that as long as we have one of those professionals on the range with us, they can really trust us to know that, um, you know, they're going to get that bump and they're going to get the upgrade and it's not going to be too pricey on their end. Yeah. So you can see, you know, having the uh, professional staff on the range with our team is the only way to make an effective day. If the professional staff is not there, then our team is managing the members, managing the, the walk-ups, which due to COVID protocols, we can't have right now. So we want our team focused on the fits and we want your team confirming and closing the sale. And we're trying to give you all the tools to do it with the online scheduler and with the trade-in bump and with our track man there and all the demos. So uh, our goal for 2021 is to make these demo days or fitting days as effective as possible for sure. And then finally, um, we wanted to talk to you about tournaments. <laughs> um, the first thing as you guys are getting back into some normalcy, uh, your members are coming out uh, and playing in some of the events and tournaments that you can have. We cannot stress enough check inventory <laughs> yes so this is going to be something just like the golf balls if you have a tournament in june we are going to want to get that order in right now it's not something that we're going to wait on um, particularly if it's going to be something like logo um, but it's going to be something we're going to want to put in the system now and um, luckily callaway provides us with such good terms on tournament orders that uh, we're going to want to get it um, out the door as soon as possible just to make sure that you guys have that for your um, you know whether it's a member guest um, or you know some sort of fundraiser. Um, it's going to be something we want to get in the system now um, and get shipped as soon as possible. It's not something we want to wait till the, the last minute. Therefore, yeah, this is a, um, a you know obviously a different time. And one of the things we've created is the new Callaway microsite. Um, the microsite is awesome. You can send the link out to your me your members, your guests, whomever's coming to the event. They can buy on their own. Um, and have it shipped to their own house. The shipping is free. Uh, you get overage. Uh, so anybody, that, so say somebody spends $100 over, um, you get 30% margin uh, credited to your account. So the microsite is a really nice way to not worry about inventory. Um, and Callaway, Odyssey, OGO, all on there. Uh, we have a ton of great options stamped wedges you can do logo putters um all the ogo the travel gear the um you know the layover bag which is a an awesome carry-on because people will start traveling again uh ogo has a brand new line of travel covers that uh you know it's been a little weird to sell travel covers right now but people are going to start traveling again hmm. um and when they travel they're going to need all of the tools from callaway and as one of your MAPGA partners, we certainly hope uh, we're one of your go-tos for uh, our tournament product, our travel product, and certainly uh, all of our clubs. Yeah. So, um, you know, we we appreciate the partnership here. It's very important to Andrew and I. Um, you may have some questions for us, so uh, I think John's going to manage the question part. So. Uh, thanks so much for being great partners to us. Cheers to 2021. Let's let's go get them. <laughs> thanks, guys. All right, uh, we have uh, opened the chat. If you have any, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have any questions, I do have one, Mary, that I got by text here, and that is in reference to the uh, custom orders. And I, I think I heard it in there, but that um, it sounds like we're encouraging uh, custom orders because that's the fastest turnaround. Is that is that accurate? Yes, so read between the lines on that one. Um, if you have an order for a member, please make it a custom order uh, right now. 
they we are uh, prioritizing custom. Uh, even the stock orders are a little bit slower. So uh, change the grip, uh, put it in the box, add a wrap, uh, whatever you got to do to make it a custom special order. And it's generally going out within uh, one to three days. So uh, pretty awesome shipping right now in most product. Awesome. Uh, any other questions for Mary? Uh, Drew's in here too, but I assume most of the central chapter is going to be uh, for Mary. Uh, you can type them in the chat. Look, the video was uh, was so informative. Nobody yes. has any questions. It was comprehensive, exactly. <laughs> Mary, it's that uh, strikes me though. It's been got to be fifteen years that uh, Callaway's been a partner of the Central Chapter, isn't that right? Maybe more. So it, it fifteen or twenty. I mean, it's been a really uh, you know I'm. You guys have all known me. I'm a believer in uh, the partnership and sponsoring the section. Uh, we want to support you guys as much as we can. I think uh, over the past 20 years, Callaway has done a really good job of supporting our PGA professional. And uh, we really feel uh, grateful for the support that you guys give us. So uh, we're going to keep sponsoring it and uh, we're going to keep supporting you as best we can. Awesome. And you're going to be there next Monday, right? At, at Argyle? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Bell's on. <laughs> Mary and Andrew, th thank you. I th uh, this is my 20th year in the section in the chapter. And I don't remember ever going to a spring meeting that you weren't there at Mary. So I think it's been 20 if I had to, I had to bet on it. So uh, one, thank one you more, again. One more comment. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Rear asked, uh, he said, please tell us about the range balls again. He, he missed that. So if you can uh, uh, let's see, uh, range balls, um, range balls are coming in on the boats. Um, and they're very slow. If you order range balls right now, um, we are looking at July. If you have not ordered them, uh, already, some of you have ordered them for the rest of the season. Uh, we do have a selection of range balls in stock that are, uh, a tour ball. So um, if you're looking for a tour ball, um, contact Andrew or me and we can discuss. But range balls are gonna be a problem for every vendor. As we said in the video, I strongly suggest whichever vendor you use, and we'd really like you to use us because we have a great selection of range balls, uh, book them now. Let me be clear. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Mary uh, and Andrew. Appreciate, appreciate your time uh, as, as always. Thank um, you guys. Our pleasure. Uh, uh, so we will hear from uh, Jeremy Greiner and his companies uh, along with Signature Golf a little bit later in the meeting. Uh, so I thank you again for uh, all three companies for your continued support of uh, not only our, our chapter, but our section and all our golf professionals as well. Since the uh, since the minutes have been previously approved, published, and made available to the membership, uh, I'm going to entertain a motion from the uh, video Zoom, not the floor, to dispense from the reading of the minutes of the Central Chapter Fall membership meeting, which was on October 5th of last fall, as well as our Board of Directors meeting uh, this past February 2nd, uh, 2021. If you, could chat, if you could type into the chat, do I have a motion? And if so, please enter your name. Uh, full name in the chat, if you could, please. We've got... Thank you. Do, do I have a second? And if so, please enter your full name in the chat, if you could, for me, please. Yeah, we have a second. Thank you. If you are in favor, uh, you do not need to enter anything. Uh, all opposed, please enter your full name and nay in the chat. Okay, the motion passes. Thank you. While there is not a vice president report for this meeting, uh, Mr. Oberly will be sharing additional information with us during the committee reports. For the report of the secretary, John is, uh, is doing double duty today. So John will now present the secretary's report. Thank you, Jay. My secretary's report is available in writing and uh, we'll be showing uh, that in the next few slides. I would like to begin by recognizing all, the, all newly elected members since our fall meeting. Uh, Josh Apple from Raspberry Falls Golf and Hunt Club. 
Alan Beck uh, from Penderbrook Golf Club, Morgan Bowden from Congressional Golf or Congressional Country Club, Jordan Hubber from Eisman Golf Academy and Laurel Hill Golf Club, Matthew Schneider, Brenton Woods Recreation Center, and Gage Teff from Robert Trent Jones Golf Club. Please join me in congratulating those members who have celebrated a quarter century of the PJ membership since the fall meeting. Linda Gotti from Country Club of Fairfax. We also have the following in attendance with, in attendance with us here today. Uh, our PGA Career Sultan, Greg Stenzel, and our PGA Regional League Manager for PGA Junior League, Doug Ward. Thank you. We are now pleased to share a video from Dan Baker, Senior Director of Partnership Development at PGA Headquarters, to share additional information about the Golf Retirement Plus program, whether you are new or would like to learn more about the program, or your, your current account holder, you will learn something from this presentation. Hi, welcome to the Spring 2021 PJ Section Golf Retirement Plus Overview. We're glad you can take a few minutes to join us and learn a little bit more about PJ Golf Retirement Plus, whether you're new to it and interested in opening an account, or whether you're a current account holder and you'd like to get some more information. I'm Dan Baker. I'm the Senior Director of Partnership Development for the PGA of America, where I oversee our relationships with the golf companies, sponsorship programs, what they do with the sections, with tournaments, with the PGA merchandise shows. We want to bring you some good information today, and I'd like to introduce Tracy Fenza from AIG. Hi, I'm Tracy Fenza. Um, I'm a Golf Retirement Plus Specialist. I've been with the program for about 10 years now, so have probably spoken with many of you already. Um, I work directly with the PGA professionals, the PGA, the sponsor companies. Um, so I kind of can see it from all different angles and I'm here to answer questions and, and help the professionals as they get enrolled in Golf Retirement Plus. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, today we wanna to go through some things and give you a little bit of information on the benefits of Golf Retirement Plus and who can participate and uh, how does it work? And then some statistics on Golf Retirement Plus, I think that might surprise you as to uh, the success of the program and where we are today. And then a quick overview of our current sponsors and then a Q&A with Tracy to talk about some of the most frequently asked questions or misconceptions. So in eligibility, all PGA members or associates are eligible if they're in good standing to enroll the program, you can enroll at any time. Um, and the investment uh, funds that AIG offers are a wide variety from aggressive fund programs to, um, to conservative fund programs. And uh, you can work with the AIG folks on what the best investment mix is for you based on your situation. And then in terms of sponsor, sponsor contributions, um, the, the, our sponsors pay a royalty to PGA professionals those royalties are paid through the PGA of America into AIG and into your accounts. So we also like to talk a little bit about some statistics. So uh, one of the great things about VGA Golf Retirement Plus is we just crossed at the start of the year, the $200 million mark. We have $202 million in assets under management with AIG. Uh, annually, we're generating about $7 million in royalties from the sponsor companies. The average account balance for a PGA professional is $27,000. The average sponsor contribution uh, or what PGA professionals can put in every year is $1,300. And obviously some PGA professionals put in less than that. Some people PGA professionals put in a lot more than that. We have over 6,400 account holders that represent about 4,200 facilities around the country. And last year we added almost 200 new accounts and we're always looking to add uh, head professionals who don't have an account uh, as an opportunity for them to generate more revenue. So one of the, the things we looked at uh, in studying uh, Golf Retirement Plus the last uh, few months was over 42% of all head professionals at a PGA recognized course have a, a Golf Retirement Plus account. That's in that 6,400 account holders. 42% of all PGA general managers have an account. 49% of all directors of golf have an account. So we think obviously that's that's really good uh, penetration and obviously, uh, you know, having almost 50% of, of those participants uh, is terrific for the program. 
Uh, one of the interesting things is that 47% of account holders own their shop, but 53% of all account holders don't own their shop. So often there's a misconception that if you don't own your shop, you can't participate. Uh, and then there is the opportunity for many of you who have an account and you're the head professional or director of golf or the general manager that you can move money downward to your assistant professionals, get them to open an account um, and you can you can contribute money to them, and especially maybe if your facility doesn't offer a 401k program for employees, that that could be a good way to start your assistance on a retirement plan. So that's an opportunity there. And then our current sponsors, obviously we start with Tyleson Footjoy, who, uh, who uh, started the program with the PG of America back in 1997. And then you can see we have uh, several key equipment companies, apparel companies, gifts and awards, uh, headwear companies, and a variety of, of PGA partners that are participating in the program. Uh, many of these companies offer a royalty that's over and above any discount. So we encourage you to talk to your sales reps, talk to those sponsor companies, see how you can take better advantage of the Golf Return Plus offerings that these companies provide because many times uh, you might be leaving money on the table uh, with their programming that they offer. So Tracy, I think at this point, we'd like to go to ask you some questions on some of the misconceptions or questions that you get consistently. So one is, I, I, if PJ Brentschel say, I don't own my golf shop, so I can't participate in Golf Return Plus, what would you say to that? This is a big one that we've been fighting for about 10 years now, ever since I've been here. Um, you can participate in Golf Retirement Plus, even if you don't own your golf shop. Um, as Dan, as you alluded before, there are most of the companies in the program are going to offer golf retirement plus dollars above and beyond any discounts off invoice. So the shop and the and the PGA professional can both participate. There are some that will offer an option either of either one or the other. You and the employer will decide which way you want to go on those. But we can cater that to meet the needs of your particular facility. So if you want the discounts here and golf retirement plus dollars here, we can set that up. We do that every day. Also, in addition to that, you can make your own contributions into this. This is a non-qualified account. So you can make as you can contribute as much as you want into this. It won't impact what you're putting into your IRAs or any other qualified accounts, but you can make contributions if you want. You have some extra money and want to build up that retirement account. You can do that really easily with this account. Thanks, Tracy. And then when PJ Professionals, when they register with the sponsor companies, do they also sometimes think that they're also enrolled in GRP, but they're not? Yeah, that's a newer that's a newer trend we've seen. Um, people are aware, the professionals are aware of the different companies. So they may go to one of their sponsors that they do a lot of business with. They get it set up. That's great. But if you don't have a Golf Retirement Plus account, there's nowhere for that money to go. So if you set up something with the sponsors, and even if you're not sure if you have, if you know you don't have one, or if you're not sure you have a Golf Retirement Plus account, please reach out to us. We can get the account set up. It only takes about 10 minutes over the phone. Um, very easy process, but very important if you want to receive those actual contributions. And then what forms are required annually? What do PJ professionals need to do each year? Right. Annually, the big one is the facility authorization agreement. This is an annual requirement by the PGA. Um, a lot of people think that that enrolls them with the sponsors. It doesn't. You want to look at that facility authorization agreement as your deposit ticket. We have to have that form on file each year in order to deposit the money from the sponsors you've selected. Um, the other step is then at that point, we will help you make sure you're enrolled with the sponsors. On that facility authorization agreement, there's always a small box that indicates which sponsors require annual enrollment. I think there are only there's five or seven right in there that require you to re-enroll each year. The rest of them are just a one-time enrollment. You're good from year to year. Um, unless you change facilities, then you'll always want to re-enroll. So those are an annual form. And then the last annual form would be if you're sharing contributions with multiple professionals at the same facility, there would be an incentive allocation agreement. Um, I know that sounds like a lot of forms, but you always have me there to help you with that. Um, I'm, I work through that with everyone each year to help get them set up. So two, two takeaways are one, get your forms filled out. Two, 
call Tracy, email Tracy. Exactly. Those are good. That's good advice. So, <laughs> um, and then also PD Rentals can view their contributions online or how do they access to check their, their sponsor contributions? Yep, they have access. They already have access and they don't realize it. All you need to do is log into PGA.org. When you're on the resources tab, click on Golf Retirement Plus. That is going to open up all kinds of information. You'll be able to see sponsor program information. If you click on account holder information, that's going to be your key page. You'll be able to see your sponsor contributions. So you can see what came in from what sponsors and when it deposited. That's a great way to tell if you're missing money from a sponsor. Um, that would give you an idea. Maybe I should follow up with my sales rep. And the other thing you can do from that account holder information page is actually connect to your account at AIG.com. So you can see your account, your investments, your values. Um, you can make some small transactions online, but there's a lot of great information out there. It's all right there through PGA.org. Thank you, Tracy. So if, if you don't have a, a PGA Golf Retirement Plus account and you are the head professional director of golf or GM at your facility, get one. Take advantage of it if you can. Uh, Tracy can help you with talking to your employer about if you don't own the shop about what the advantages are and help you have that conversation. So we've got some information posted on how you can reach out and contact and we're here to help you and thank you for your time today. Thank you. Great, and thank you. Now we're gonna go through some of our committee reports. Um, we're gonna start with our sponsorship committee report. Uh, as always, uh, you know, every year we talk about how important it is to pay attention to who our sponsors are and when possible to support the company that are supporting us. Uh, obviously last year was a tough year uh, for many of our sponsors uh, as they were doing catch up in, in manufacturing as uh, Callaway alluded to, um, but uh, they're all catching up and supported us as much as possible uh, during a trying year. Uh, a lot of our uh, partners from last year uh, deferred their commitments to 2021 and we were pleased to announce that uh, so far we've had six brand new sponsors who have signed on for the 2021 season. We have Eagle Bank that's joined us, Golfdom, Golf Pro Payments, Pacekeeper Golf, Swing Golf Ireland, Tin Cup Products, as well as some trading guys, which I actually have an event with them here in early April. Um, we would also be very remiss if we did not take the, the opportunity to always thank uh, Mr. Charlie Briggs, PGA, General Manager at Burning Tree, uh, for his continued uh, support in securing both of our junior title sponsors for the last many years with HIT Construction or HIT Contracting in Lindsay Automotive Group. And speaking of sponsors, uh, let's hear from one of our, our second sponsor for today's meeting. I would like to thank Jeremy Greiner for his partnership and sponsorship today. Jeremy has uh, shared this video regretting uh, his many lines that he's continued to support us with. Uh, so if you could please watch this video from uh, Jeremy Greiner. Don't go away or you're gonna miss your chance to win two tickets to a Washington Nationals baseball game. During my presentation, I'll give out three keywords. Text those keywords to me with your full name and you'll be entered to win the drawing. You'll be in it to win it. Hi, my name is Jeremy Greiner. I'm a 26 year member of the PG of America and I've spent over 20 years here in the middle Atlantic. Since 2017, I've been an independent sales rep. I pride myself on being honest, knowledgeable and forthright with both the good and the bad so you can make the best decision for you. Sound fair? And let's dig into some of my lines. Morel Studios makes some of the most elegant awards on the planet with incredible design and craftsmanship. In fact, the PGA of America uses Morel for all national and section award winners. And the base of the MAPGA section championship trophy was made by Morel. Morel's specialty is 3D art using a mold that is unique to your facility. You'll be the only one in the world with this mold, and you can use it as a motif for your tournaments. Morel has a wide variety of recognition panels, so we can put something together to fit any budget. If you prefer more traditional awards like crystal, silver, or ceramics, Morel has you covered. 
Morrell has put thousands of dollars into MAPGA tournaments over the years. So is there one recognition panel we can do for you? Is there one tournament we can help you with? Please let me know. Oh, and by the way, Morrell is PGA Retirement Plus. Wow, what a great presentation. All right, your first keyword, NATS. N-A-T-S, NATS, 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 woo! Next, I'd like to talk about Jack Jolly and Son. Jack Jolly has been in business for over 50 years. They have an incredible assortment of grips available for your shop. Jack Jolly also has a wide array of supplies for club repair and your range. Doesn't stop there, but Jack Jolly has great impulse buy items like sunscreen, bug spray, hand warmers, and the like. Jack Jolly offers a 10% discount when you order a full case of grips and a 5% discount when you order a half a case of grips. All of their deliveries are almost always the next business day, so let Jack Jolly deliver for you. Was that cheesy? Wow, the presentation keeps on getting better and better, huh? All right, your second key word, the face of the franchise going forward, Juan Soto. Soto, S-O-T-O. Are you looking for a unique, inexpensive item for your shop? No Sweat makes a simple, disposable hat liner that absorbs perspiration to keep it from running down into your face or in your eyes. Plus, it absorbs odors and it's very hygienic. Check out how easy they are to use and how absorbent they are. All you do is take the backing off of the liner, put it in your cap, and then you're good to go for two to five rounds. And let's see how absorbent they are. I'm gonna put some water on this. I'll count to three. One, two, okay, I'm getting tired. Look, it's all gone. Billy Cullum, if you're out there, you've met your match. Order one of our kits by March 31st and we'll cover the shipping for you. Okay, Lorente is a family-run business in its second generation led by Angelo Lorente. They offer a wide array of different repair tools, ball markers, and tea gifts. With Club Lorente, we will make a custom medallion with your logo that can be used in dozens of items for your shop and tournaments with one to two day turnaround time. Lorente does not stop there. We not only stock shop staples like towels and bag tags, but Angela can source pretty much anything you want for a big tournament or outing. Lorente is also PGA Retirement Plus. In addition to the lines I just covered, I also carry Precision Pro Rangefinder, Columbia Sportswear, BK Knits, and U-Ray Sportswear, which is also a PGA Retirement Plus account. If I could just pick one of them to talk about, I couldn't because they all have something great to offer. Thanks for staying to the end. Your final keyword is Curly W. It's not a word, but you get the idea. Text those keywords, Nats, Soto, and Curly W to me at 703-304-6040. Before we head back to the meeting, I just want to wish you the best for the 2021 season. Take care, and please let me know how I can help. Okay, I need a motion so I can end my presentation. So noted. Wow, 43 people have already seconded it. Okay, I'm out of here. Well, that went pretty well. Well, that was very much Jeremy Kreiner, Kreiner style, wasn't it? Uh, thank you again, Jeremy, uh, for sponsoring, as always. Uh, obviously, a lot of products to hit a lot of parts of our operations. So thank you again. Um, On to our tournament report. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Bob Heinz and our Central Chapter Tournament Chair, uh, Bryce Bussey, for securing facilities to host our events. It's obviously a tough climate to secure sites, so we appreciate uh, their diligence to to do so, and we want to thank all the facilities for assisting us uh, in the 2021 season. I'm not going to read the full schedule, but just wanted to remind everyone of a few key events being played within our within our chapter upcoming. Uh, first off, next Monday, we have our Spring Pro Pro, uh, March 29th at Argyle Country Club, thanks to, um, to the team there. And the deadline obviously is tomorrow, so please sign up. Um, spots are available, and we're hoping to for a late push to get a full field. 10-day um, forecast uh, looks really good. Our chapter championship is going to be on Monday, May 24th at Piedmont Club. So thanks to the team there as well for hosting. Um, the day after, we have our club 
Car Pro President, which is on Tuesday, May 25th at Bellhaven. Um, so again, thanks for the team there for hosting uh, our, our section member guests, as we like to put it, for everybody to bring somebody key from their facility. And then our fall meeting in Pro Pro Assistant is going to be September 7th at Old Hickory. We're hoping to have that meeting there in person and then transition to the golf tournament like we have in the past. And then our, our section championship is uh, September 13th through the 15th at Riverbend and at Westwood as they uh, co-host. Uh, appreciate the teams there again for hosting. If you have any uh, questions, please reach out to Bryce uh, with any questions. And again, thanks for their efforts uh, along with Bob to get the uh, facility secured and look forward to a good tournament season. Quickly in regards to employment, uh, as a reminder, uh, I think everybody uh, should be aware by now that Career Links is now gone. Uh, the new system through the PGA Job Board is uh, where everything is uh, posted and you should get alerts from those. Uh, you must fill out your job preference to participate, so please do so. Uh, our current completion rate within the section is uh, the highest in the country, like we are in many of our metrics, so appreciate everybody's uh, diligence to do that, but there's still some who have not yet completed and we don't want anybody to be uh, left out of any potential uh, positions that may, uh, may meet their career goals. Uh, now here is our PGA career consultant, Greg Stencil. Uh, Greg always supports us and Greg has recorded an update and will be joining us today to answer any uh, follow-up questions that you may have after his video. Good morning, this is Greg Stencil, PGA career consultant for the Middle Atlantic and Tri-State PGA sections. And thank you for letting me share just a few minutes with you this morning. I am happy to report that with the help of our IT department, they have completed the compensation survey tool. Log in today and update your information. It's not only a help to you when you're looking for a job or negotiating a contract, but it's also a help to your other fellow professionals and employers. I would also like to make mention that you can use the compensation survey tool to update your information at any point during the year. So if you happen to take a new position or your compensation changes, simply log into the compensation survey tool and update your information. As we enter the second year of the COVID pandemic, I want to make you aware of a program called the Employee Retention Tax Credit, which may be available for you and your facilities. It's a tax credit that's paid on wages made to your employees. You may ask, do I qualify for the employee retention credit? Any employer that had its operating hours reduced due to the government order is considered to have partially suspended its operations and would have the availability to apply for the ERC. It's a credit on federal taxes that employers pay on wages and salaries. It's a tax credit, not a loan, and can be applied to any current payroll. Facilities that qualified for the ERC in 2020 would have 100 or fewer full-time employees. A full-time employee would have had to have averaged 30 hours of service per week or 130 hours per month. Facilities would earn a tax credit of 50% of the qualified wages up to $10,000 for a total of $5,000. And employers can still ask to receive that credit by amending their Form 941. Qualifications changed in 2021, allowing facilities to have up to 500 full-time employees. The credit also has increased to 70% versus 50% in 2020. This means that you can earn a maximum credit of $14,000 per employee available over two quarters, 7,000 each quarter. And you may apply early with the IRS by using Form 7200. Facilities can earn even a bigger employee retention credit by using a strategy along with the PPP. Make sure that you check with your payroll company or your CPA. They should have all the information you need to fill out the 941 or the 7200 form. As always, I wish you the best in your career and in the upcoming season. And again, please complete the compensation survey and take advantage of the employer retention credit available to you at your facility.
while we wait to see if we get any questions in the chat that John has mentioned there for Greg, um, hopefully uh, not everybody was able to join us for our employment summit that was conducted on May 15th, uh, but Greg Stencil and his army of career consultants from across the country uh, joined us to discuss really what's going on around the country, you know, providing some great feedback on the market that's happening out there, uh, ways to differentiate yourself and some really new ideas to market yourself. Um, there's some digital profiles that are being created by, uh, you know, some folks on Spark and I actually had uh, an associate send me uh, their digital profile. It was really impressive. So some great things happening out there. Uh, Greg, uh, John, any questions for Greg? Uh, no, no questions, but I do want to remind the, the group here that uh, the Employment Summit uh, from March 15th is online at our, on our YouTube channel, so anybody can go watch it and pick up those tips and, and uh, helpful information from Greg and his peers, uh, as well as watch the mock interview of Michael Mock uh, and watch him sweat as we uh, asked him some questions and then reviewed afterwards, which I think is always a good exercise. Yeah, I'm sure Michael Mock would love to have everybody uh, click on that and give him feedback. Uh, he was a trooper that day. So thank you, Mike, if you're on the call. Uh, I will now hand off to uh, our past president of the Central Chapter, Phil Bowers, to discuss the report of the Scholarship and Player Development Committees. Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> first, I'm going to do the Scholarship Committee report. The PGA Financial Assistance Fund, or as we call it, the PGA Family Scholarship, was established in 1986 and provides college scholarships to children and grandchildren of PGA members. Since its inception, the PGA of America has awarded over 3,000 scholarships, totaling just over $7.5 million. The deadline for the scholarship application window has been extended to April 5th. Those not chosen to receive a national scholarship will be considered for the Bildac Fred Funk Family Scholarship at the section level. If you have a child or grandchild who might be eligible, I encourage you to apply. Please visit pga.org for more information. And uh, now I'm gonna slide into the Player Development Committee report. I would like to introduce Player Development Coordinator at the section office, Claire Janza, and our Regional Manager, Doug Wirt. They have prepared an in-depth presentation. As you are listening, please enter any questions you may have in chat. Doug and Claire will be available to answer those questions following their presentation. Good morning, chapter members. My name is Claire Jansa, and I am your player development coordinator for the section. I'm originally from South Dakota and I'm a second generation PGA professional. This is gonna be my third season in the section. I've met many of you and I'm excited to continue to meet more of you. Today, I have Doug Wirt, our Regional League Manager, here to answer some questions on player development opportunities that we have here in the section. Some you have already heard of or maybe participated in, and we also have a few new opportunities that we want to share with you. Doug, thank you so much for joining us today. Do you want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Claire. Uh, welcome, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. I wish that we could be together in person, but I thank you for letting me join you today. A little bit about myself. I now serve as Regional League Manager for the Middle Atlantic Tri-State and Western New York sections uh, in the Coaching and Player Development Department at the PGA of America. I am a 29-year member of the PGA of America and I've served in many roles uh, in facility management around the country as well as a director of a PGM program. I, I am very passionate about player development and I'm here to help you create value for yourself and your facility. And I've truly enjoyed the time in my role over the past four years, learning more about you and your facilities and looking forward to seeing what best fits you and uh, your facility. Awesome, thank you, Doug. Again, so happy to have you here today. Um, I wanted to get started with PJ Junior League, a, a program that many of our professionals have already heard about, some may have not, so just wanna cover a few questions here that may help them as they continue to move forward here in the future with their player development. So with PJ Junior League, is it hard to get started with PJ Junior League? You know, it really isn't, Claire. You know, PJ Junior League continues to be the flagship program of all the programs we have available to help uh, create more activity at your facility. It is really not that hard to get started. Uh, the first step is really to review, review all the information on the website 
and then give me a call or Claire a call to get more information. You know, we've really made it easier at the local league level now to get a program started and provide a great experience for your players and families. We've reduced the number of players needed for a league as well as relaxed rules on team size and number of matches. Uh, and we provide a pre-registration tool now on the website to help professionals with steps to get started. Yeah, that pre-registration tool is really awesome. Um, so is PJ Junior League for competitive players or for player development or both? That's a great question. You know, it's really awesome that we have, uh, you know, the postseason with PGA Junior League. It does create more excitement, more awareness of the program. But, you know, PGA Junior League is a player development program, and it's there to bring communities together uh, through the fun team golf experience. You know, plus those experiences that, that transcend golf itself, you know, like friendships that can last for years to uh, come or a newfound sense of confidence for a player. That's awesome. So who can play in PGA Junior League? So PGA Junior League is open to boys and girls 17 and under. Uh, and we have two divisions, 17U and 13U. And we definitely welcome all skill levels and abilities. You know, no prior golf experiences is required to participate on a PGA Junior League team. And over 80% of the players in PGA Junior League in the past are either, either beginner or intermediate golfers. That's awesome. I love the wide range that we get to offer this program too. So how has player registration been this year? I know last year was a little difficult, but we did see some success, but how are we doing this year? Well, you know, first of all, we were amazed with the players we did see in 2020 with the pandemic, but uh, this year we're seeing record registrations, uh, not only in the section, but around the country. As of March 3rd, uh, we've seen an increase of 47% uh, number of players in the section and across the country, we're seeing a 61% increase. That's amazing. I love hearing those numbers. So with hearing how amazing player registration is, is it too late for a facility to join PJ Junior League? It's really never too late. You know, we set some deadlines so we can put leagues together, but uh, we can work on getting you into a league or you can host an in-house league at your facility. You know, if you wanna participate in postseason, you only need 24 players this year. Uh, if you're not worried about postseason, you can register as many players as possible and host a program at your facility to get started. Awesome. So then talking about in-house, is it hard to run an in-house league? It's not difficult at all. Um, I've hosted an in-house league in the past as a captain and really enjoyed uh, the benefits of doing so. You know, you have everything at your facility. So it's easier with scheduling, easier with team sizes, easier with communication with your parents. And then the facility benefits from that additional revenue from additional play, food and beverage and more. And if you have 24 players, you would have an all-star team that are your own players from your club. That's pretty cool. So along the lines of those benefits that you were talking about, can you elaborate a little bit more on um, the financial benefits of having PJ Junior League? You know, we've heard so many uh, stories about revenue streams and you can see more on PGAJuniorLeague.com, but streams that have been created from PGA Junior League, you know, first of all, you have your registration revenue, which is generated by a price that you get to choose based upon what you're offering. Uh, then you can uh, create additional instruction programs to generate revenue for you or your for your team. Uh, and I've heard stories about it being difficult right now to provide enough compensation for assistant professionals or instructors. Well, PGA Junior League is one way to help with this uh, for those people. And then we've also heard great stories about increase in food and beverage revenue, merchandise sales, and other activity at the facility. That's awesome. I love hearing all the benefits for our PGA professionals. So after hearing all this, it someone hasn't already gotten started, how do you get started with PGA Junior League? Well, first of all, they can contact you or myself. Uh, and then the other thing is go to PGAJuniorLeague.com and click on, click on the Captains and Coaches tab uh, to get more information. And uh, if they want to give me a call, uh, my number is 719-351-2738. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for all that information for PGA Junior League. We've seen so much growth here in the section and, and love all the opportunities that it gives our PGA professionals. So moving on from that, we have our new program that I am super excited about and can't wait to really dig into here in the section. So I have a few questions for you on PGA Family Cup. So why PGA Family Cup? How did it come about? Oh, it's a great question. Uh, you know, PGA Family Cup came about from uh, a number of us on the coaching and player development team seeing at PGA Junior League matches, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, kids, whatever, on the cart path watching um, as the PGA Junior League players would were playing. And so we got to talking about, okay, how do we get them off the cart path watching and on the course playing uh, in a fun format for families, you know, and so in PGA Family Cup, uh, you know, the thing is we look at it in regular sports, uh, your team becomes your family. Well, the cool thing about Family Cup is that your family now is your team. And this really brings family members uh, of all ages together on the same team and connects them for golf, uh, through golf. And so, as I mentioned, think about all those different family members and you know it's so relaxed as well that you can invite a friend as well if you want. Awesome, so that family term is loosely defined, I can tell, which I love that you can include anybody that you love or want to be around. So what can this PGA Family Cup program do for a professional in their facility? Well, what we found is PGA Family Cup uh, through our uh, phase of piloting it, it's uh, strengthening relationships at the facility. It's helping uh, professionals create more lifetime golfers, and it's helping them also build vibrant communities at their facility. And those of you as PGA professionals and facility managers, you can build your business also uh, by giving clinics and lessons to the family members who don't golf or want to improve their game before or after. Uh, participating in a PGA Family Cup event, uh, and then use this momentum to help keep them engaged after the event uh, at your facility. Awesome. So then how does PGA Family Cup tie in with PGA Junior League? Well, PGA Family Cup we see uh, as a natural progression from PGA Junior League. You know, PGA Junior League has created those communities of families at your golf facility. And now PGA Family Cup gets those families, as I mentioned earlier, off the cart path watching and onto the course with their children playing. Awesome. So then how does PGA Family Cup work? Well, it can be hosted as a single event at your facility, or you can host a series of events in a format chosen by you. Uh, we do recommend, we have a recommended format that you know, you can do a series of two or more events that keeps the families engaged and coming back to the facility, uh, or you can do one event, tie it into your PGA Junior League. Uh, really, it's up to you, but we also recommend a nine hole par three setup uh, that utilizes yardages from 50 to 150 yards. And we feel this setup uh, allows everyone to play from the same tee, keeping the family together. It helps you with pace of play, and it really creates that fun, an inclusive atmosphere for the families, um, for players of all skill levels. Awesome. I love the flexibility that there is um, for everybody to be able to make it their own. So how many PGA Family Cup events does a facility need to host to be a part of this program? That's up to the facility and what best fits them and their schedules, you know, so you can offer one event in the season or uh, offer a series of events. We've had professionals do both. We've had professionals who offer Family Cup um, as a way to finish their PGA Junior League season or to start it off. Uh, and then we have professionals around the country that have hosted a series of events, you know, once a month. Uh, and even seeing success stories of hosting PGA Family Cup on a special themed night uh, dinner and your food and beverage and the family staying you know, for that theme night. So that's really up to the professional what best fits them. Fantastic. So how do our PGA professionals get started with PGA Family Cup? Well, first of all, just like PGA Junior League, they can contact you or myself and then 
The other way is to go to pgafamilycup.com, which by the way, I want to say is a brand new website and a new platform, new format than what we've been using for PGA Junior League. The registration process now is so much easier than uh, what we've seen for PGA Junior League in that you register your facility one time and then as you want to add events, you go back into that registration and add events and details of the events uh, so that you can advertise them to your families. And then the other thing I want to share is what you get out of PGA Family Cup as a professional. First of all, got my support, Claire, here to help. Uh, the website has uh, an amazing number of tools to help you uh, with marketing, promotion, running the event, uh, and all kinds of tools there. Um, also, we provide you awards uh, for each event that you host. Uh, three awards uh, that are made by Signs of the Sea, nice family cup pennant style uh, that you can hand out to the families for winning or different types of prizes you might want to do during the event. Uh, but we provide that for you. And then uh, the families each get a team kit that uh, includes a wireless mini speaker, a, a photo frame with the Family Cup logo on it, a tote bag, and uh, two poker chip ball markers for fun for later. That's awesome. I kind of want one of those team kits, not going to lie. They sound awesome. Thank you so much for adding all this in. I have great information for our PGA professionals. It's awesome. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the time. And, um, you know, one of the things I want to talk about next and, and ask you questions about is uh, a new program, Doubles Golf, which we in coaching and player development see as a great natural progression uh, for players as they get older or uh, want to participate in more events uh, at their facility. So, you know, first of all, tell me a little bit about Doubles Golf and then who can uh, participate. Yeah, so like you said, doubles golf is a great progression. This program was brought to us by Jack Nicholas and the creators of PGA Junior League. And it's the new trademark style of the two-person scramble nine-hole format. It's a great way to have a quick, easy um, way to get your members out and playing and increase this play that we're seeing at your facilities. And what's great is anybody can be on a doubles golf team at your facility. You can have a husband and wife. You can have a father, son, mother, daughter, um, two best friends, cousins, aunts, uncles, anybody you can think of. When you register your facility and your members go and register as teams, they get to put who they are, how old they are, and they get to put, be put into a division that works for them. And anybody is welcome, and you can register for as many teams as you'd like, which is another great opportunity. They don't have to think about who they want to be on a doubles golf team with. They have an opportunity to be on a doubles golf team with anybody that they wish. That's really cool. It's just a, another great way to create excitement around the facility, plus give uh, people more opportunity to uh, compete and play and have fun. So um, what are the additional opportunities for facilities and uh, professionals? Yeah, so once a facility is registered as a double go doubles golf facility, they have access to use the doubles golf format, the doubles golf logo, and anything regarding doubles golf, which also includes doing six to eight week leagues at your facilities. You can do it for multiple divisions or only one division. And then you can also do just one-off events, so a couple's night or a wine and dine night or a themed night um, using that doubles golf format. And then you also have the ability to do a club championship. There's five main divisions that you get to do a club championship in that gets to move on to a section championship and then to a national, much like BJ Junior League. That would be your men's, your women's, mixed, seniors and adult junior. Now you are welcome to host a club championship for any of the divisions that are registered at your facility, but those are the five main ones that would move on through the qualifying process. And what's fantastic is there is no cost to the facility to do any of this. And with all the events that you hold, you get to pick that price. Now with the leagues, you will set the price 
$20 of that will come to the section to help with administration of section championships and any administration of leagues that we do. Um, but again, you get to pick that price based on what you are going to offer at your facility. And then your events, like your wine and dines or couples nights and your club championships, you get to set that price based on if it's multiple days or what you're involving food and beverage wise, cart wise, anything like that. So it's a really great opportunity to, again, keep that engagement up and build more revenue for our PGA professionals, which we're really excited about. Yeah, it sounds like a, a great way to include things, uh, not just at your golf course, but at your facility as well. Uh, so let me ask, uh, how much work is involved in running uh, doubles golf on behalf of the professional? Yeah, so again, there's a lot of opportunities, obviously. And the big thing is, if I do all of this, how much work am I putting into it? And what's really great is, besides getting set up, getting the tee time set, the availability on the course, and kind of all that background administrative stuff, that's pretty much what you have to do. After that, what's great is there's this scoring app that they use and the teams will post their scores for the event. So after they're done, they'll post it to the scoring app, which you have access to as an administrator at your facility. And you'll be able to see those scores and the scoring app will do the majority of the work for you, which is amazing and doubles golf also has a lot of resources to help you work through any scoring allocations anything like that that may be, need to happen if there's um, players of different abilities within an event but again other than just doing that background administrative stuff once they start playing it's up to them to post their scores which is great that's really convenient you know so uh, the fact that they can score themselves. So uh, tell me a little bit about how the scoring works. Yeah, so whenever a team plays the nine hole format doubles golf, they can post their score into the scoring app. Now, again, that's whether if they play in the league, in an event, or if they just go play out on a Saturday afternoon with their doubles golf team. Whenever they play, they can post their scores. And Teams will then be rated based on either when they sign up if they put in their handicaps or after they have played two doubles golf rounds, they'll receive an official rating, which you can kind of think of as a handicap, um, but it's just a doubles golf version. And then within those ratings, so it's A, B, and C, within each division, they'll also be ranked and they'll continue to be ranked. So anytime they post, that ranking will change and they'll be able to see where they are at a facility level, at a national level, at a level. So it's a great way to keep people involved all the time with what we kind of consider a running scoreboard, which is really awesome. And those ratings are changed quarterly based on your score. So if you have a team that's getting better, they'll change into that different rating. If there's a team that's struggling, they'll get changed. So they're always playing against people that are at the same level they are, or if they're playing against someone that's maybe in a different level, that scoring allocation will be there to help you make it an even playing field for everybody, which is great. So it really sounds like a, a fun way to keep score, keep track of how you play. The app does a lot of that, does all that for them. Um, so it sounds like a really great, um, way to create more activity at your facility. So um, how does a professional get started in doubles golf? Yeah, so much like PJ Family Cup or PJ Junior League, you head to doublesgolf.com, click on the course registration link. It's very simple. You just put in your basic information for your facility, and then you'll receive an email from doubles golf with links to marketing materials and any information that you may need to help run your leagues events and club championships and obviously again i am here to help doug can help and anybody at doubles golf is available to help with any questions as well but we just see it again like doug said as a great progression from pga junior league to pga family cup now to doubles golf to continue this amazing increase in play at your facility in a fun and competitive way for anybody who wants to continue to play golf with people 
and continue to see your club as a second home. So again, we're very, very excited and happy to help in any way that we can. Well, this is all great. Uh, very excited to spend the time with you today and everybody else. I uh, just want to say thanks for the time and the opportunity to serve um, everyone in the section and continue to help with player development. And, um, you know, I just want to leave with uh, encouraging everybody uh, to do what you can do to maintain the momentum that we saw in 2020 um, and keep things going because it's very exciting times now in our industry, despite what everybody's been dealing with. Make sure that you're doing everything you can to keep this momentum going. So Claire, thanks so much for the time and uh, please, uh, everyone, please feel free to reach out if there's anything that I can do to help you. Yes, thank you so much, Doug. This information has been amazing. And like Doug said, we're here to help and we're excited for the season to start and hopefully get to see you guys in person soon. So thank you again for letting us join you. Thanks again, Doug, and hopefully we'll see you guys soon. Hey, Phil, you want to close your uh, presentation? Sorry, I got a little bit distracted on something there. Thank you, Doug and Claire. Uh, please utilize the career development resources and offerings documents if you would like to learn more about their offerings. In addition, Doug and Claire are always available should you have any follow-up questions. All right, uh, now for the Junior Golf Committee report. Uh, the MAPGA Junior Tour is currently underway and is scheduled to include over 40 events during the 2021 season. Uh, the, mini, the mini Mulligan division is back this year, um, which is the nine hole division, ages five to 10 years old. Uh, please share this information with your fellow PGA professionals who are or may be considering hosting an outside for-profit tour event please consider hosting a MAPGA tour event as all of the efforts and money raised will stay within the section. The MAPGA junior golf wants each parent and their child to have an amazing experience where the junior becomes a better athlete and competitive golfer, but they should also learn the values which support the development of character, which they must possess to be successful throughout life. No for-profit tour can honestly state that this is their intent, but the MAPGA can. Now on to our MAP, or sorry, our PGA Reach Middle Atlantic Foundation update. Uh, Patriot Golf Day over Memorial Day weekend now shares revenues with PGA Hope and Folds of Honor. During the last five years, our section has collected almost $3.5 million in providing 700 scholarships. This has positively altered lives in our community. To learn more about this program, please join me in watching this short video. Hey, it's Colonel Dan from the Folds of Honor throwing a huge salute out to all my fellow PGA members. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, though we are separated uh, in this COVID world, I know our spirits are united as we press toward Patriot Golf Day 2021, this Memorial Day. Uh, Folds of Honor, PGA Hope are together, truly forming the most holistic, impactful veteran program this country knows. It is the most heroic round golfers get to play all year long, and it happens this Memorial Day. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the why behind this. Folds of Honor now has awarded over 29,000 scholarships to spouses and children who've had someone killed or disabled defending our freedoms. This year brought so many challenges to our country, one of those with this great racial unrest and our desire for equality. I want to highlight a statistic about Folds of Honor you probably don't know, but 41% of our recipients are minorities. My humble opinion is the bridge to equality only comes through this gift of education. Combine that with the impact of PGA Hope bringing veterans to the game, stemming this tide of 20 veterans a day committing suicide. This is a noble and heroic mission but it doesn't happen without your help. 
we need you to visit PatriotGolfDay.com and register your facility for Patriot Golf Day. You will receive MSR points, but more importantly, you're getting into the fight. And that is an opportunity and I think an obligation we have as PGA golf professionals to lead and to lead in ways that matter most in taking care of our military, the veterans who are so suffering from post-traumatic stress and fighting um, in a healthy way to find equality in this country are amazingly good and important reasons to participate in Patriot Golf Day this year. Our goal is to sign up over 5,000 golf courses. We will take those funds raised over Memorial Day and split them evenly between Folds of Honor and the scholarship recipients and PGA Hope. Again, thank you for your support. I look forward to seeing everybody in person as we find our way back to normal in 2021. And I am blessed to be a PGA member. God bless everybody and God bless America. All right, now for our education committee report. Um, the spread education series has concluded and was another great success. Our recorded seminars can be found on the section's YouTube page. The MAPJ also hosted a very successful virtual teaching summit on March 8th. Presenters included Dr. Sasha McKenzie, Mike Romatowski, Dr. Scott Lynn, along with Tim Campbell from Iconic Golf and Marty Jernson from Ping Golf, both of which were event sponsors. A recorded version is available on the MAPJ website for a $10 donation to the PGA Reach Mid-Atlantic. Thank you, John. Um, as we move into the president's report, it's important just to uh, quickly mention, um, obviously this fall we'll be conducting uh, a, a more unique election than we've had in previous years as we have two positions available on the central chapter board. Uh, elections for the vice president and secretary uh, will take place at our fall September meeting at Old Hickory on September 7th. Uh, obviously, I feel that the talent that lies within the central chapter, uh, we should have a, a, an ideally a strong slate of candidates um, to choose from. You know, having served the past six years for, for everybody as well as uh, a few years on committees prior to getting on the board, um, I know what it's done for me professionally, uh, reached out you know, as far as uh, networking opportunities and, and just strengthening bonds with my fellow professionals. Um, I think it's, uh, it's, it's a great time to initiate and lean, and, and lean in to, uh, to uh, help your uh, central chapter board and, and, and move the PGA forward. You know, obviously I get a question a lot about the time commitment, which was one of the barriers that I felt there was before committing to the board. Uh, and it's a fair question, um, but it's a minimal amount of time compared to what you receive in return. Um, the PGA of America has obviously evolved greatly over the past 10 years with new ideas and goals. So serving on the board provides a voice to your ideas uh, or your concerns. Uh, it's a great, all great organizations advance and get better by debating thought and proposing ideas to better an organization. Uh, I hope you'll consider running uh, this fall. I've had some initial conversations with a few people out there I encourage more uh, conversations. You can reach out to me at any time, as well as John Oberly uh, or, or Phil Bowers. Uh, and I won't speak for Josh Trimbley and Lynn Hunter, but I'm going to, I know that they'll be happy uh, to discuss uh, any questions you may have as well. So I look forward to having a great slate of candidates this coming fall uh, and at the, at the fall meeting. So again, reach out if you have any questions. I'm pleased to announce that uh, the MAPGA uh, will be having a new website soon. And we'll be launching a, uh, uh, they'll be launching its new website and with some new enhanced features, including an easy to use interface, some, mo uh, some mobile responsiveness, and obviously some easy to use access for member login that corresponds with your PGA.org login. So we'll look forward to having that roll out shortly. At this time, I will entertain a motion for the meeting to accept all the reports as presented. If I could have a chat that supports that. 
Do I have a motion? If so, please enter your full name in the chat. If I have a second, if so, please enter your full name in the chat. You are in favor and you do not uh, need to enter uh, anything into the chat. All opposed, enter your full name and nay into the chat. If there are none, the motion passes. Next, we're gonna hear from Mark Barron uh, and Craig Hammett from Signature Golf who have shared uh, the following videos, video with us. Greetings to our fellow PGA professionals in the Middle Atlantic section. Signature Golf is once again a proud section sponsor. We have a bevy of exciting benefits for you as a PGA professional in 2021. As we watch 2020 disappear from our rearview mirrors, we can't help but inhale a little deeper and smile a little brighter. The scent of spring is in the air, nights grow shorter, and playing a round of golf becomes our favorite way to pass the afternoons. So the question remains, where to first? As the seasons change, can you hear Scotland and its historic golf courses in St. Andrews calling your name? Or perhaps Ireland and all of its friendly pubs that are waiting to serve you a pint of the finest Guinness as you remember the round you just completed at Royal Portrush, site of the 2019 Open Championship. Or maybe it was watching the sunrise as you prepare for a round at the world famous Old Head Golf Links. Remember the bet Rory McIlroy's father made on his son to win the 2014 Open Championship? You can play there before the Open returns in 2023 to Royal Liverpool. And speaking of Open Championships, the 150th Open in July of 2022 returns to hallowed ground at the old course at St. Andrews Lake. Let us provide you and your members with front row seats with one of our signature golf authorized hospitality packages. For 2021, Signature Golf is excited to now offer trips to South Africa with a 12 day package starting in Cape Town and traveling up the garden route through some of the best wine country in the planet. Don't worry, we didn't forget the golf though. With rounds at South Africa's most sought after destinations, all culminating with a safari and a chance to see the big five. If staying stateside is more your club's cup of tea, Signature Golf has packages to many of the must play in the USA. You too can play where the tour pros play with many of our most popular packages. Play places for free, like Pebble Beach Golf Links, six-time host of the U.S. Open Championship, or Kiowa Golf Resort, host of the PGA Championship in May of 2021, and past host to the Ryder Cup and the Senior PGA Championship. Signature Golf offers our clients a team of dedicated PGA professionals with over 150 years of combined privately owned transportation vehicles, flexible payment terms, and our exclusive loyalty program are just a few of the reasons why so many PGA professionals choose Signature Golf for all of their travel needs. New for 2021, Signature Golf offers three convenient ways to pay for your trip. For those who pay right away, for those who save for a rainy day, and for those who prefer things on layaway. We've got a payment option for you. PGA professionals enjoy exemplary benefits when they partner with us at Signature Golf. In case you missed in our last presentation, please ask the regional director for information on our PGA incentive program, our world-class proposals and marketing toolkits, and our section sponsorship. 
sponsorship, cash incentive. Book your international trip for 2022 with Signature Golf through the end of July 2021 with a 100% travel credit guarantee. Deposits begin from $750 per person. Contact your Signature Golf representative today to start taking advantage of all of the tailored options that we can create for your club and your membership today. Thanks again to Signature Golf, and this might be their five-year anniversary of uh, supporting our section. So big thanks to Craig Hammett and Mark Barron for all they've done to support uh, our members, as well as uh, helping our members that we uh, take them across the pond. So we appreciate everything they've done for us. Uh, on to the unfinished business, uh, Mr. Vice President, do we have any unfinished business? No, sir. Mr. Vice President, do we have any new business? Um, I've received none, no, sir. Okay. Does anybody, uh, does anyone have anything for open forum? If so, uh, now's the time to type it into the chat. Executive, Executive Director Gould will assist in reading the items received. Uh, while we wait for some questions to come forward, we'll take just a few minutes to watch a video about the 2020 Wells Fargo Championship to be conducted at TPC Potomac. Hi, everyone. And thank you, John. Thank you, Bob, for having us here today to talk about the 2022 Wells Fargo Championship, which we are bringing to the Washington, D.C. market. Um, we're excited to be here, and more importantly, we are excited to partner with you, the members of the Mid-Atlantic PGA section. And uh, we truly want it to be a partnership, and I'll go into some details about that. So I'm Jim Corcoran. I'm the Director of Business Development and Community Relations for the 2022 Wells Fargo Championship. Uh, I'm local here. I live in Vienna. I'm a member of Westwood Country Club and uh, have known Glenn Brown and Matt Gallagher, some of your uh, members, for a long time. And uh, if you need to uh, find out anything about me, you can chat with them. But uh, we're excited to have the Wells Fargo Championship here for a number of reasons. The market is a, is a great golf market and golf hasn't been here since two, the PGA golf hasn't been here since 2018. And so the market is ripe to have a PGA event here. And it's not just any tournament that we're bringing, the Wells Fargo Championship is the most recent winner of the Player's Choice Award for the PGA Tour. PGA Tour players love the Wells Fargo Championship and we always have a great turnout uh, for the, uh, we usually have one of the best fields, in fact, of all the non-majors or non-world golf championship events at the Wells Fargo Championship. The reason we're coming here uh, to this market, in addition to it being a great golf market and a great market for the Wells Fargo Corporation, is we, um, our, our host course, Quail Hollow, will play host to the President's Cup in 2022, and we hope to be back in 2025 when Quail Hollow will play host to the PGA tournament. So there's a real uh, uh, opportunity for uh, continuity here with the Wells Fargo Championship as we move forward. For us to be successful though, we have to see you be successful. And for that reason, we really want to partner with you. We wanna find out from you what's most important to you about partnering with us. How can we help you with your junior golf program? How can we help you with your overall program? How can we help you promote the game of golf for your members at your club? Of course, we hope you'll be willing to uh, help us uh, be successful at the tournament as well. We will need ambassadors. We will need volunteers. We hope that you'd be uh, interested in helping on the driving range or uh, uh, marshalling at the uh, uh, pro-am events to make sure that they come off without a hitch. Uh, hopefully participate in those programs too, if possible. Um, but as, as you're hearing me talk about partnerships, we want you to know it is our intent to partner with you like we do with the Charlotte section at our, at our regular tournament. And we're available to answer any questions you might have. 
John and Bob have my contact information if you want to get in touch with me. And we really, really, really look forward to partnering with you. And we look forward to seeing you in 2022 over at TPC Potomac. Thanks and have a great day. All right, thanks to Jim. Uh, we did uh, get a few uh, posts in here for the for the open forum of the chat. Robert Bloomer uh, from Creighton Farms uh, added, uh, I would like to acknowledge Bruce Kozell, his new assistant golf professional to the team at Creighton Farms. He joins them from uh, his internships at Crofton Country Club in Maryland and Arcadia Bluffs Golf Club in Michigan. And they look forward to working with him as he works towards his class A over the next few seasons. Uh, so congratulations to Bruce. Welcome to the Mid-Atlantic section. Um, I, and, and Greg Stenzel uh, posted a note uh, just uh, reminding us uh, that uh, the uh, job postings are now um, available on career uh, on the uh, job board. And we've been running them uh, one time in the uh, uh, news and notes every week. You should have got news and notes while we're on this call, actually. Uh, any, any new posting uh, will be running uh, in that as well. So we're trying to help you promote those jobs as they come open. Uh, that's all I have right now, Jay. Uh, if you want to keep moving on, and we'll, we'll still leave it open uh, for a few more comments if anybody would like to type it in the chat. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, and just a quick reminder, uh, PGHQ, um, this was recently announced, uh, providing a new online tea time system, which is a huge opportunity for professionals uh, to have their online tea times marketed through the PGA brand uh, without giving up trade times that incentivize lower rates. So uh, PGA tea times will protect your rack rates. So those uh, facilities that will utilize that, uh, we highly recommend that uh, you start to use that, uh, that feature that the PGA of America has partnered with. Uh, as we wait for potentially any final items uh, for open forum, please note that we're hoping to meet in person, obviously this fall. Uh, that will be our goal for both our section and our chapter membership meetings. Uh, again, the fall meeting is September 7th at Old Hickory, and we'll try to do our pro pro assistant uh, that day as well. Um, John, any final comments by chance that have come through? No, sir. All right. Well, having no other items for open forum, we'll conclude the meeting. Um, so do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? If so, please enter your full name in the chat. Thank you, Robert. Do I have a second? If so, please again enter your name, full name in the chat. Thank you, Ned. If, uh, if you are in favor, you do not need to enter anything else. If all opposed, enter your full name and say nay in the chat. All right, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Again, I look forward to seeing everybody in person. Have a fabulous golf season, and I look forward to seeing you on the golf course soon.